uh, concentrate on, on artifacts that are going on exhibit, going on loan. We do a very big business in loans to other museums because our collection has such depth and has really strong provenience. And we also work on materials that um, are in immediate danger. Um, right now, um, this is a, a new, relatively new acquisition for the museum. It's a Asian traditional ethnic raincoat um, made of palm fiber from the Areca palms. And um, we're, the curatorial section is having a little discussion about where it actually comes from. It was said to have been collected in Japan, but it seems to be Chinese. But it's going to be going on exhibit in our new acquisitions case, and so Nina is going to be making it ready for exhibit. Um, Julie is mostly working up in the galleries these days. Uh, we have a project working on two of our most important Asian artifacts, which are um, limestone relief sculptures of the first emperor of China's two of his yeah. favorite horses. Two of his six favorite war horses. Yes. <laughs> and, um, They've, yeah. <laughs> They've been in our collections uh, since 1917. Um, they had not been conserved for 80 years and we're overdue. So uh, Julie's doing cleaning in situ and then we're hoping to disassemble them and um, use modern methods to put them back together. So a lot of our uh, materials um, that were originally installed in the 20s and 30s. Now those um, adhesives and methodology is failing as time goes by, and so a lot of our work is remediation of those sorts of things. Which uh, brings us to Ellen's and babies. And <laughs> the Chama vessels, which were a big um, project that I worked on, and uh, we can go over on the other side and take a look at some stuff that I but, uh, this seems like the kind of office where you guys all have to get to get, get along really, really well. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. And um, they, they, they're not allowed to throw things. <laughs> <laughs> a sense of humor is almost, you know, a requirement. All right. Mm -hmm. um, so when Ellen first started working on the Maya pots for this exhibit and asked me to take a look at them, um, they were in really... <laughs> Pretty sad condition. Most of them looked like this. Um, they, every time you touched them, more pieces fell off. And um, they had been excavated between 19... 1916. Most of them were 1916 to 1920. And um, the excavator did some of his own mending until the director of the museum asked him to stop doing that and just send the shirts back to Philadelphia. And after that, they were mended here at the museum. But the adhesives that were available at that time really weren't, didn't have a very long lifespan. So um, everything was falling apart. So we started essentially by taking everything apart and um, reassembling it and using modern adhesives that will stand up to the test of time. We hope they're rated to be good for 500 years, but I won't we'll be around to worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but it was a big job because many of them had hundreds and hundreds of pieces. Um, and so one of the things I did was make essentially roll out maps of the piece before I took oh, wow. it apart. And then as I individually disassembled it, cleaned every single shirt individually, and then I would lay them out on this like a puzzle. <laughs> Just like a puzzle. And then start to put it all back together. And um, she smiles at me. <laughs> <laughs> it was um, it was very challenging and uh, one of the things about it is that although they're beautiful vessels and um, they tell us a lot about the people who made and used them, one of the things they tell us is that they weren't terribly interested in making pottery for eternity. Um, <laughs> It's not terribly well fired. This is um, one piece of an artifact that Ellen will show you up in the gallery, but this is just one small piece of it when I first took it down. And that piece itself came down into 35 other pieces. And so like every time I took a piece apart, guy. that's Night Jaguar, yeah. 
And so it was just constant smaller and smaller bits and then getting them all together. And then, you know, if you get it a little bit off, then you, a little bit off times 75 pieces ends up being a lot off. Right. And so you have to spend a lot of time sort of readjusting. And um, we, also, <laughs> we also did a lot of analysis to see some of the vessels aren't very easy to read, to see what's on them um, for um, the naked eye. So this is the same vessel in visible light photography and ultraviolet light photography. And that was so successful that we thought, um, let's see what else we can do. And I knew that there were techniques of infrared photography, but before the digital era, they were really hard to do. Um, and I knew that it was easier now that we had um, digital capabilities, but I really didn't know how to do it myself. 